Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tito Clock. So please welcome your host, James Deacon. Oh, that's me. Hi. What's up, everybody? Ha <laughs> ha. We got uh, a big fat zero <laughs> out there, but that's okay. We're expecting that in the beginning because um, at this point, we're still having dramas with the Facebook overlords. So we're just going to give it a second because we got to share the link on YouTube. So only then we're going to start seeing uh, some people come into the show because, well, we normally go live on Facebook, but as I said, can't really uh, tell what the overlords are going to be doing over there, but they've somehow blocked the account and um, we can't go live for whatever reason. Maybe we said something about the vaccine or maybe we said something about this monkeypox thing. Who knows, right? But uh, let's just uh, wait for a little while till we get uh, a few people here until at least May Anne and June um, click in and start logging in. Otherwise, we will just, there you go. Our first three are up. Okay, should get uh, the ball rolling from here. What's up? If you're out there, pop me a little message on the side there so I can see you and uh, say hello to you because we're just going to wait till we get a few more in. If you just joined us, don't worry. Don't panic. Like I said, we are just uh, having some trouble with our Facebook um, link, which means it's just three bucks. Uh, share it onto the Facebook page. Don't know why, right? YouTube works fine, but of course, most people are watching us on Facebook, which is why we're just going to give him a little while to catch up. Is he still kind of he's always out there? He or she, I'm not sure. Um, let me know. Not really that good nowadays, you know, but just in case. So, do I address you as Mr. Silk or Miss Silk Phillips? I'm not sure, but it's good to see you out there. Thanks for uh, your message. Um, give it a little time, give it a few seconds, a few minutes. You know, this uh, whole social media police thing is just getting completely, utterly, totally out of hand. I don't know if you've noticed it, but they're cracking down again because, well, there's a brand new conspiracy to sell. No, not conspiracy. There's a brand new, let's just say, uh, something to to manipulate us again is out there. Um, and so they're just going to play these games. So let's just wait for a couple more minutes and then we shall begin Grab it, Taliga. But anyway, we got a few people over here. If you are watching right now, just pop in a little message like Silk did, and uh, just want to see who's out there. Is the uh, let's check the Facebook. Page. Okay, so it's just about a minute ago or so since it was posted. So let's just give it a second for everybody to catch up. Did you put the link on? Yeah, it's it. The link's there. Okay, so let me just pop this here. Just put a little. What's up, everybody? Everybody. YouTube. Okay, slowly, slowly coming in, slowly coming in. Hi, man. Uh, good to see you here. And uh, hi, Christiana Williams. You see, okay, the regulars are starting to flow in. Good, 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 good. I was worried there for a little while because, you know, I said you probably missed the whole first part. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything at all. Um, it was just us trying to explain the drama of Facebook not allowing us to share the link or go live um, for some strange reason or another. Mildred says, hi, Sir James Millie here. I'm good, Mildred. I'm good. Um, just waiting for the rest of the crew and the rest of the community to uh, log in. Kathleen says, TGIF. Yeah, we uh, we feel that. We feel you, really. Um, even though it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a Friday. It feels there's a whole vibe to a Friday, right? Just came from the motor show. Um, over at SMX, they have, if you're into bikes, really, really cool. You want, might want to drop by there. Um, certainly worth your while. I was able to see the uh, the launch of the Yamaha was hosting it. So, of course, I saw it. And they've got some gorgeous bikes over there. I mean, I'm talking retro bikes, but with modern technology. So cool. Really, really cool. Um, if you are in the area, SMX, 
it's a great place to sort of get great ideas about bikes or just celebrate your passion for it. Lots of people there, lots of enthusiasts, lots of different um, displays and, and different kind of booths and manufacturers. You can also get a lot of apparel and stuff like that. And then you get to see the really cool bikes up close and personal. Um, Tito James, is there any update with the famous driver in the Mega Mall incident? RS Rada says, RS, you know, no, um, I, I've been on that. I mean, like I've been following it closely and, and posting about it regularly. And it just seems that this this person who I don't know who's protecting this person, but they seem to be completely above the law. They just don't seem to. The last update that I got was that they cannot any more hold him because the warrant is expired and now it's a, a it's strange it's really strange and then you know some people are basically making that connection um to the, the ateneo shooter and the reason they're making that connection is they're, they're saying well if you're going to allow this and you're just going to turn a blind eye to this because it was so blatant what the suv driver did right he ran the guard over in front of uh video and and it was released it went absolutely utterly viral and um, nothing happened so of course when you set an example like that you create anarchy anarchy in, in in people's minds because they're like what is the point of following any law because it's one for all or all or, or none at all right so that's why i'm also on that case as much as i can because it really really bugs me so i'll promise you that as soon as i get any information i'll share it and I also don't want to basically let that go. I just don't want to let it just disappear because we are going to get more and more um, embold. We're going to create this emboldened society of people who think that they can get away with murder, literally. Okay. That's what's happening here. We got to make sure that that stops. All righty. I think 128 people is probably safe to start. That's enough people to share the latest in headlines with. And for that, we need Chris. Chris, be gentle now. We'll try, Tita James. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. This is Chris, and here is your Tito Clock News. A medical team from the government-run Mariano Marcos Memorial Hospital and Medical Center, or MMMH and MC, in Lawag, Ilocos Norte, has been deployed to Abrat to bring aid to the seven-magnitude earthquake survivors that struck many parts of Luzon last Wednesday. The hospital said it would deploy more medical teams to Abra in the next few days. The first batch, composed of 10 hospital personnel, including doctors, nurses, a medical technologist, pharmacists, a cook, and EMT-trained personnel traveled to Abra Thursday morning, bringing with them medicines, health supplements, medical supplies, a portable x-ray machine, and two ambulances. Immediately after the earthquake, the hospital suspended its outpatient department operations. Aside from the medical team from the MMMH and MC, Ilocos Norte also deployed personnel from the Bureau of Fire Protection to Abra for a quick response operation. Two motorcycle riding gunmen shot dead the father of Dr. Chao Tiao Yumol, the suspect in the Ateneo de Manila University shooting in Lamitan City, Basilan, this morning. Police said Rolando Yumol, a 69-year-old retired member of the Philippine Constabulary, was gunned down at least four times outside a store owned by the Yumol family. Rolando was immediately brought to the Lamitan District Hospital but was declared dead on arrival. It would be recalled that last Sunday, the younger Yumol went on a shooting spree just before the holding of graduation rites of the Ateneo College of Law, killing former Lamitan Mayor Rosita Furigay, her aide Victor Capistrano, and Ateneo security guard Heneven Bandiala. The Philippine National Police said the incident is under investigation and that it is speculative at this point to link the attack to the Ateneo shooting. A total of 106 kids ranging from 6 to 14 years old will have the stage to themselves on August 6, 2022 when the Iron Kids event takes the lid off of Triathlon Weekend at Mactan Newtown in Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu. Those in the 6 to 8 category to have a 100-meter swim, 2-kilometer bike, and 1-kilometer run will be non-competition but to break the kids into the sport. 
trophies for the 9 to 10, 11 to 12, and 13 to 14 brackets will be up for grabs. The 9 to 10 division will have a 200 meter swim, a 6 kilometer bike race, and a 1.5 kilometer run, while the 11 to 12 is slated over 400 meters for the swim and a 6 kilometer bike and 2 kilometer run. The final category for the 13 to 14 will be doing a 400 meter swim, an 8 kilometer bike, and 2.5 kilometer run. The Iron Kids has served as a side event to the Ironman series for years, contributing to the growth of the sport and also ensuring the steady flow of talents. K-pop band Treasure and GOT7's Jackson Wang arrived in Manila on July 28, a day before they're scheduled to perform at a show. Treasure and GOT7 members Jackson Wang and Bam Bam will headline the 2022 K-pop Masters in Manila that will be held tonight, July 29, at the Mall of Asia Arena. Filipino fans waited outside of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 1 to get a glimpse of Treasure and Jackson. They arrived at Naia Terminal 1 past 10 p.m. This is Treasure's first visit to Manila since debuting in August 2020. Got Seven's Bam Bam, who is also part of the lineup, held successful fan sign events in the Philippines this week. He has been enjoying his time in Cebu and Manila, trying out different Filipino food in between spending time with his supporters. Those were the latest in headlines. And now it's time for us to sit back, relax, take deep breaths as we see what's happening in Kamote Corner. Bam, bam, bam. I'm going to hold you to the relax part, okay? I'm going to hold you to that, Chris. Uh, try lang natin. Here, and if I come out unchilled, right, <laughs> it's your you fault. Know, okay. Always at the last part. <laughs> but I always have a bad feeling about it. <laughs> okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Of course, we're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see the first okay. one. I see this is a uh, grocery scenario that we probably are um, familiar with. Let's see the clip. Roll it. <laughs> Just like a normal day. <laughs> I know it's going to happen here. Uh huh. Gabina. <laughs> Wala talagang paki. Wala. Okay, bye. Mga uh, mamaya, that's a, that's a dedicated uh, shopping cart parking slot. Mga mamaya, we don't know, right? Pero, we don't <laughs> if know. Not, I found it. If I not, medyo uh, baduy yun. Baduy. <laughs> baduy indeed. Baduy indeed. Konti <laughs> lang. It doesn't take much, you know, just to... But some people really they're not wired that way. They just they're just so self-absorbed, they don't care. True. I mean, That's I we were with Barakai just uh, recently, and you know, we were just seeing bags of like entire bags of garbage floating on the yeah. in the car ride. Yeah, it's a, you could tell it was just like they tied it and just threw it across, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, there's really Parang a mindset change we need. for a long months now <laughs> yeah. to get it cleaned. What People. is that success? It's just it's just in consideration. That's all. That's what it is. It's just not even mm -hmm. thinking about the uh, everyone else. You know, I mean, what what the harm? What harm is it to just put that back, right? But anyway, maybe just near the staircase. Yeah, yeah. Set my piece. Don't wanna don't wanna get too dramatic about it because I know <laughs> I've got a few more, and uh, I got a pace. I got a pace. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Hundred percent. All right. Tell us all the credit. A little courtesy, please, on the groceries. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. now, the second one is... I just ask, why are they everywhere, Tito James? Mm -hmm. We've seen this a hundred times. And I know this place. <laughs> I know that place. Is that in uh, uh, Alabang? Or, um, I think it's Nomo. Yeah. I'm not Where sure. Where uh, do you say Nomo. it is? Uh, Via Lifestyle. Not sure yes, if it's... Yeah. Dang yeah. Hari. Yeah. I think yeah. I, I know that especially when it was zoomed out. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that's already a really hard place to park. That place True. is all jam-packed, especially this this outdoor parking area there. 
It's always okay, jammed. <laughs> well, of course, it's you know cool extra parking when people take two slots, right? So <laughs> that's why it gets jammed back. Oh my god! <laughs> when will we learn? A little consideration, guys. To your fellow motorists. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Marie says the crowd is increasing compared to last week. It is actually Marie, so maybe it's maybe it's not the worst thing that's happened, right? Uh, Gary, the the what happened is Facebook. We don't know because they never say right, but we mm-hmm. got it just got automatically disconnected from the Streamyard. It's a streaming app, and it won't allow us to reconnect again. So, whatever reason now, it's they don't give it to you. So they just let you deal with the bots, and they give you a, a set of instructions that never work, and then they expect you to just. Well, I, we're living in an, in an AI age now, so it's very. It, we're going to expect more and more of this because as people outsource all the customer service or problems to AI and bots, you're never going to get that human yeah. interaction understanding. You know, it's just yeah. this is the steps. And if the steps don't work, which they don't, no matter how you follow them. Oh, I'm sorry. Got a lot. You just may as well scream at the wall. <laughs> Did you get any message or email from them from Facebook? That no, um, you know, it maybe somebody or... out there has used StreamYard, they might be able to share or help us because what happens is every now and again, and I don't know why, but regularly, at, let's say every month or two months, um, for some reason it disconnects from the Facebook account StreamYard, which is the mm-hmm. software we're using to come at you mm-hmm. live, right? And so yeah. It disconnects, and then all you do is press the button. It says, but don't, it even says a worry. Don't worry. We got you. Just click this link. And as soon as you touch the link, it goes, there's a green arrow, and it goes, you're, you're good. <laughs> this time, it's like, no, Facebook denied. And like, wait, why? What, what happened? What changed? Basta, Facebook denied. Then it gives you a list of things to do, and you go there. You do all the things. You, de- you delete the app. You change the permissions and all this. And then it just says, Facebook denied. So... Yeah, AI is the one answering if you have a problem that needs to be resolved. They, that's the frustration. That's that's a frustration. True. Okay. Please, face, please fix this, Mr. Zuckerberg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> lang. All right. The next one, Tito James, I'd like to ask, is this allowed? Because I asked my dad about it. He said it's possible, but he ano can to? ask. Things. For sale, white plate with complete. No, 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 no. You can't. Well, I mean, you can deregister your car, um, but I don't. No, I don't. No. Um, so this, as, as far as I know, no, because illegal. That, yeah, that, that that's not yours to sell per se. Now, if it's a personalized plate, which this might be, DTB fifty five. I'm I'm. I don't remember those digits, right? I remember if they were the green plates, they were like um, MPU-392 was our pickup. PAK-393 was our van. Those were in the 80s. See, I don't remember that. Crazy. Huh? <laughs> I don't remember this unless it's a provincial one. But no, you can't really... A personalized plate, you could, but you could transfer. But this one, a bit vague to me. But I don't think so. don't think so. All right. But then, you know, go, go to the LTO. Don't take my word for it because Malay Mo, it is a personalized plate. Um, that yeah, because I just that told me that the, uh, the person might want to um, transfer the registration and whatnot. I'm a noob, so <laughs> I don't really well, understand it, the technicality. There is a precedent for it, put it that way. So, you, you know, you could get a personalized plate with your initials. So let's just okay. assume that this is the case, right? Let's, let's think the best and not the worst, right? Um, that this is the this is these are initials and it's a personalized plate and so you're reselling it basically just as somebody who sees value in it but you'll still have to go through the LTO you cannot just buy it from the guy and stick it on your car you need to go through the process because they have to deregister and then it has mm-hmm. to re-register under a new vehicle so it's a transfer etc and that's very complicated or a lot more complicated than just buying it off marketplace. But that's yeah. the best thing to offer you. But I'm sure you'd you know you'd be better off if you really were interested in this to go to the LTO. Noted, Julie noted Tita James. All right. And next, um, wala akong ma-caption, kundi kapit lang, kuya. 
<laughs> Wait, My please tell me he's not the one driving. Oh no, I see an extra set of legs. I was gonna say he was the one driving. I'd be like, oh my god, what are we come to now? But okay, okay. I just say the time. I just say. Then I feel like more secure pa yung box than the guy at the back. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! At least na ka helmet si Kuya. <laughs> Credit where credit is due. <laughs> True. <laughs> Ay, nako. Let's be careful Next. out there. Next, last but not the least, um, this is possibly me if my dad teaches me how to drive. Let's see the next, the last photo. Oh, I love this one. Yeah. This is fun. <laughs> so, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've taught three kids how to drive already, so I know exactly what's going on here. It is really <laughs> hard. It's really hard to teach your kids. In fact, there should be a kind of almost like a law against it. Well, I'm, I'm exaggerating now, but in the same way that doctors aren't supposed to operate in their own families, mm -hmm. and fathers and mothers should not be teaching their children because you get yeah. too emotionally attached there. So True. it's like you need <laughs> that third party sometimes. But I, just I was able you. to do it. I was yeah. able to do it. A lot of patience, kids. James. No screaming or with a lot of screaming. Oh, well, I mean, okay. I might be a different type of case, but I do understand because I get very nervous. I just don't show it because mm -hmm. I I grew up, my dad taught me when I was eight. So I was very, yeah. how do you call it, um, a little bit more open-minded about things. I'm a little bit more trusting. I'm going to give them a lot more leeway because it's very tough when you when you, you, you appear so nervous and you're screaming and you're shouting and all that because it, they don't learn. They just they just get scared, you know, and it, yeah. that's not what you're teaching them. You have to sort of be calm and let them make certain mistakes. That's why you take them first in a very safe area, um, not even your subdivision of your of your village, yeah. your village, villages, um, because that's still a public place. So I took them first to like these um, Clark Expo Filipino parking lot in Clark. That was massive, and it was closed off for us, meaning not for me teaching my kids how to drive, but it was closed off for an event. And then after the event, when there was you know nobody there, I just asked the organizers if I could drive around and stuff like that. So the, the worst thing that hit was an orange cone. And uh, <laughs> then you take them from there to bring them to, a, let's say, a subdivision after that. But just yeah. note that even in subdivisions, you should also have a, um, you should also have what you might call it, a license as well. True. So there you go. Okay. There you go. Have it. Thank you, Tita James. Well said. A lot of patience and no screaming, I hope. <laughs> That's all we have for today, Tita James. And of course, once again, we made it. <laughs> Enjoy the weekend, everybody. Advance congratulations to our raffle winners. This has been Chris reminding everyone to avoid Komote people, but always choose happiness with some sugar rush. With that, follow Sugar Rush Entertainment Philippines on social media for your party entertainment needs. And follow me as well. Stay safe, healthy, and hydrated, everybody. Until then, see you guys. Bye! That was Chris with the latest in headlines. And as always, we say the same thing. If you want to use Chris for anything, there's her digits, there's her number, there's social socials, and uh, just hook up there. Hook up meaning, you know, business, not, not that kind of hookup, right? Um, just to get a hold of her there if you need a voiceover or a host for a children's party or an online party or something like that. It does a great job. So thank you very much, Chris, for that. And now we move on to a very live version of Free Plug Friday. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's come out the corner. Um, we don't have a jingle for Free Plug Friday because it normally comes in... Anyway, here's Free Plug Friday, which is just our little community effort to sort of help spread the uh, love around the community and help those without a budget, small businesses. Yeah, we're echoing. To help small businesses get back on their feet by giving them a free plug here. If you have a small business, you want to pop us a message here on Deaconitis at Instagram or the Instagram account Deaconitis, and we'll take care of the rest. So for that, we go to XX. What you got in the box there, X? Hi, DJs. Hi, you James. actually have a lot in store again. again. But before we go there, I just want to say hi to all you clockers. Welcome to another edition of Free Plug Friday. All right. 
feast your eyes on the screen guys so let's start free plug friday with moto hauler since you also started your day with hosting a moto show event so tito james moto hauler by we bike motorcycle courier offers hauling services for your beloved two wheels whether it be bicycle or motorcycle so tito james uh all right so guys they can transport almost all types of bikes whether big or small and they can transport this via courier van that of course they secure as you can see here and the carrier van can go any place you wish i mean there are some here that have gone all the way from qc to batangas and sometimes even further so guys price depends on the load as well as the location again moto hauler by we bike motorcycle carrier on facebook all right next we go to soul cafe so I'll just put this up all right guys so soul cafe is actually a togegarao based coffee shop and of course they offer different kinds of blended coffee drinks from brewed coffee latte americano iced mocha and iced white chocolate so guys price starts at 50 pesos for the americano and it's 65 pesos for the rest of the drinks i mean that's actually pretty affordable compared to the prices found in other leading stores out there so hope you guys can check it out on facebook or if you're in the area at rizal park to Gigarao, check them out soul cafe on facebook next we go to the fat butcher ph so guys fat butcher ph offers different kinds of meats from usda ribeye beef samgyupsal tenderloin steak wagyu cube porterhouse steak and all sorts of meats as you can imagine as you can see here so guys price varies depending on the kind of meat but the lowest would probably be the samgyupsal the beef samgyupsal price is 190 pesos for 250 grams again the fat butcher ph on facebook and instagram last but not the least of course we go to sun quick philippines so guys sun quick philippines offers different kinds of fruit juice drinks from tropical to lemon to black currant, orange um even mango iced tea lemon and so much more it's a perfect thirst quencher so hope you guys can check them out sun quick ph on Facebook and Instagram. Well, that's all we have for this week's edition of Free Bug Friday. Stay safe and always, always sanitize with the clockers. This is X. Peace out. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Thanks very much, X. And if you've got yourself a small business, something that you need a little bit of help in, just pop us a message here on Deaconitis at Instagram or at in Instagram Deaconitis account. And we'll take care of the rest because that's how we want to sort of uh, just spread the love around, right? It's as simple as that. We believe that the local economy it starts with the local economy because we went through two years of pretty much chaos right or a huge vacuum for business and it, some people had to sort of do something completely different we had people who had traditional businesses that just kind of died and then they had to make ube cheese panda sal or something like that and these are the kind of people we want to help out so if you are one of these people do drop us a line if you do have budget there are many more options for you so let's not take up a spot for the small guy so there you go all right so that's free plug friday now that brings us on to our next segment which we call our ask me anything segment this is brought to you by motolite pang matagala All right, the Ask Me Anything portion. I've got myself a new cup of coffee over here. Nice and relaxed. Okay, so... Oh, Geoffrey. All right, hi, James. I'm inclined to get an MG Trophy because I saw your video post about it. How is it so far? Hmm. I love it. You know what? I'm, I'm actually more pleasantly surprised than I thought I would because I'll be very, very honest. It's like I... I it was... I was shopping for something convenient and something very, um, um, I guess, just reliable and uh, practical, should I say is the word, because I was replacing a van that I no longer needed. So, I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't going for, okay, this is going to be my dream car. It was going to be like basically the the Harabas or the, the daily driver and it had to do all the chores and stuff. But I ended up being pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with it. I'll tell you what I like the most about it um, or the few things I like the most about it and the very, very few issues I have. There's not many at all. 
Um, one of them was the, okay, the gearbox, I think needs to be addressed. Um, this is probably the single biggest thing that I have to tell anyone that would like to get a MGHS trophy and even the other MG models use the same type of gearbox. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you're not used to it, you can be led to believe that there is because it operates slightly different to a traditional automatic gearbox. What I mean by that is the DCT, it's a direct or a dual clutch transmission, right? A dual clutch transmission is a little bit more jarring than the traditional auto. So the ships can be a little bit um, more like a manual because it literally is a manual that they put on a automatic function to change. I'm not gonna get too deep into it because automatics use a torque converter. This one uses two clutches. So it's basically the same as a manual, but they have some computer software that disengages the clutch and then engages it again. So you don't have to do it with your foot pedal. It's just another way around it. So the advantages of having a dual clutch is when you're racing or racing, when you're driving spiritedly, um, it shifts faster. It can handle the shifts a little bit better because it's really working off a sequential manual gearbox. Um, if you were going to race an automatic car, for example, if you're going to go to the extreme, the gearbox is just overheat. That's why F1 cars or any of race cars, they use as the sequential manual gearboxes. And they put a double clutch system in that as well. But those, of course, are really, really advanced versions of it. So I just address it because a lot of people, when they get that first initial jerkiness, it's not all the time, it's just sometimes, the way it shifts is, oh, something wrong with it? Nothing wrong with it. All right, having said that, I love everything else about the car. I really, really, really do. Um, it's very comfortable actually very very comfortable the seats are really beautiful they're sports seats that really are buckets and uh, they've got suede two different types of leather fabric there the suede alcantara and the uh, traditional leather it's got a great steering wheel flat bottom feels great in your hand it's got a beautiful multimedia display that can that is apple carplay ready and android auto as well so that way i can see like my ways when i do ways it's fantastic basically I just do my ways before I leave the house. I plug it in. When I get to the car, I just put my phone there, I connect it, and it's automatic. It goes there. My WhatsApp, my messages, it's all there. It's Siri. It's got Siri on it because you're literally using Apple CarPlay. So I just, Siri called my son. Call, Siri, call the office. Siri, call this. Siri, uh, do this, do that. It's fantastic because it integrates very well. The other thing I like about it is the, uh, even though I don't use it a lot, it's the full-on panoramic moonroof or skyroof or sunroof depends on how you want to call it but it's basically almost the entire length of the roof is glass i keep it closed mostly because it's hot so i keep the shade done but usually at night if i'm driving around at night it really does feel good to just pop that thing open even if it's not the glass part but just the shade part and it just gives this cabin a whole different airy feel uh, another thing i really love about it is the um sound system is pretty good the digital display dash is customizable um and the fact that they use really good materials inside all right they really do a great job with the materials so it gives you this this feeling of premiumness and that's really what it's all about so sometimes it's it's not necessarily what's on the brochure it's how the car makes you feel and it makes you feel like that because of the good quality materials that they use so it surpassed my expectations in the trim level and the kind of quality that they use. What else do I like about it? Oh, my battery of my key kind of um, died early. That's the only other issue I had. But MG said, look, it's, it's not a problem. They replaced that for free anytime I want to go by or for my next service. But it wasn't so much of an issue because you get two keys anyway. So I just use a spare until I go for my first service and then I just ask them to change it. So that's it. Um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend the car. Um, have no trouble with it whatsoever. I enjoy it. I think it fits my personality, lifestyle, and uh, it's actually given me a little bit more than I initially thought. So what more can you say about something that over-delivered like that? Very, very happy. Highly recommend it. What else we got there? Uh, what's your opinion about new Ford Ranger? Ooh, ooh yeah, okay. I, I haven't driven it, but I've seen it. Um, I like it. I, I like the I like the look. Um, there's a little bit of getting used to because it, it it it's it's this hmm, 
chunky sort of uh, that that LED. Um, the daytime running lights are very aggressive. I see what they're doing. It's supposed to be like the F-150. <sighs> kind of jury's kind of out on that because it, it does have that masculine aggressive face, but it's a little bit, it's not immediately growing on me, right? So there's something about it, but inside it's got some pretty great features. I did like that whole display, even though I haven't interacted with it myself, but I do like the idea of having these center displays in a portrait style mode or an Instagram story style mode instead of the other way around because we're used to that now. So we may as well pattern our cars after our handphones because this is the kind of technology we interact with all the time. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if soon we see our TVs becoming sort of uh, portrait mode instead of landscape mode because we're just more and more content is coming out that way. Have you noticed? You know, from your TikToks to your Reels to your um, yeah IG, it's all has stories they're really favoring this kind of content. So to make your center display portrait mode makes sense to me. Then they have a few other little goodies. Now, having said all that, you know, I do have to be very honest about it. Ford have still not really responded properly to the concerns that people have about parts of service. So there's still that question mark there. And, you know, at the end of the day, as no matter how much you get excited about a car, if the parts service is not really up to speed, it's going to sour that relationship. So I do hope that they really start investing more in that instead of just launches, because I really think they need to develop that a little bit better. They need to invest more in that because that's really about the only level of concern people have. Um, cars sometimes, even the best of them, they, they, they have problems. It's how they get resolved that people will really judge you on and support have to sort of Pick it up from there. No pun intended. Get it pick up from there. Next. Friday is good vibes day. Oh, yeah. Okay, Dennis from Kilo. Wow. All right. This one needs a shot of whiskey or something in it for this topic. Dennis, um, it's really, it really needs resolving. And I just posted it yesterday, I think it was, and I was a little subtle about it, meaning I wasn't immediately you know, condemning the end the cap and I wasn't immediately slamming the QC um, department for it because I wanted to hear from the locals. I really wanted to get, collate all your comments and stuff like that so I could bring it to them and, and be objective about it. Because honestly, I cannot find a defense for what how they're able to justify this. If you're going to come up with an end cap, that's no different to the AI that we're running on Facebook right now that I've been complaining about. We're not ready for it yet. We're really not ready for it because there's too many variables there. There's too much that can be misinterpreted by AI because it's too rigid. What I mean by that is, okay, you would say, well, traffic or traffic's pretty, traffic rules should be not subjective. They should be pretty much like AI can handle it. Well, yes, to a certain degree, you're right. If the light turns red, the AI will, if you think how AI works, right? In a situation where a red light camera, then of course it makes sense that as soon as the light turns red, the camera is activated. If you cross the line, you're going to get snapped. That is black and white for me. That is a, that is a classic case where a non-contact violation should work. Then you have, let's say, speeding. Now, speeding is also one of those things that's pretty straightforward and not subjective. Um, having said that, there are some situations, let's say, when you might be overtaking, well, you might have to go slightly over the speed limit to be able to execute and perform that overtake safely. And what if you get snapped then? Then that's a little bit of, you know, a cop on the side of the road, a human would be able to understand that and say, okay, well, let's give you some leeway. But those are not the biggest problems. The problems I have are like with the right turn lane and then they put a barrier in front of it. That's a problem because the AI won't know about the bike lane or that impromptu bike lane that they put. The AI just says, well, you are on this lane and that is what I'm told. They're just responding to programming. That's it. And then that's the problem I have. And then when you send it to the adjudication board, um, they're not giving a lot of joy according to the people that have responded to us. They're saying that they're just downgrading sometimes the fine because they, they still want it. Basically, the incentive structure is all wrong. It's what I'm getting at. 
they need to fix their roads first and they need to perfect that if they want it running on AI. That's the bottom line. Until you as a city with city planning are perfect, you cannot use AI exclusively to manage traffic offenses. Got it? That's exactly, I could end my entire opinion just on that. If you as a city have not done your city planning perfectly, you cannot rely 100% on AI for non-contact violations. Simple as that, because there's too many loopholes and variables. Another complaint I've gotten um, after the I posted that, this is a friend of mine, and he's usually tuned in here. If William's there, he'll confirm this. The He was driving on, uh, I think it was in Pasig, and there was this non-contact violation camera, whatever, and the officer enforcer should i say was calling through the red light you see what i mean calling him through the red light so yes he could go so he's overriding it what happens later on when he goes because he didn't want to go he was just like ah screw this i don't trust you so good for him but now he's in a bind because there's a contradiction the human is saying come forward because they see something that the cameras don't see but the camera will just say ah this guy went through a red light do you see do you see? These are the problems I have with it. So it's very arrogant to try to implement first world solutions when we have third world problems. It doesn't work. You got to level up. And the problem that we have here sometimes and it really annoys me is we always look to these first world countries and we cherry pick. We cherry pick all the things that they do, but we don't do the work that they do in order for them to justify why they have those solutions. Case in point. When they tax you or they put a road toll on you in Singapore and every car has a COE. So now, how many times have we had this discussion? We should have um, ERPs in our car where we play electronic toll on every road. We should also have uh, certain times when we can use it, blah, blah, blah. Because Singapore does it. London does it. They have congestion charges. Okay, but have you seen London and Singapore's underground system, railway system, bus system, public transportation options? No, you haven't because they've made that perfect before they started penalizing the private car owner because they already had a solution for that problem. They were driving behavior towards their public transportation system. That's why they do it. They're driving incentive to use the public transportation system that they perfected and spent so much money on. Here, we don't have that, but then they want to use the first world solution of, oh, but we'll charge you for using your private car. That's what drives me insane about the end cap. You know, you cannot have it both ways. So I would like to see them reevaluate it by first taking it down. And then after that, do a study on it and just start implementing it slowly. Start with red light cameras. Okay. Start with red light cameras. But I tell you, if you put a red light camera there, you better have a camera pointing at the enforcers because if they start manually overriding you, you really need to have a backup plan for that. You really need to protect motorists. So that's my opinion on the end cap, and I hope it clears it up. Oh, I see Ramon agrees. Great argument. Totally agree with James. Okay, I'm, I'm polishing it because I really, I plan to take this all the way. I really plan to collate everything and eventually go over and, and talk to them. Uh, we do have an open door with them at some point. Well, it was with Manila. So we're going to try and open the door with QC. <sighs> Got riled up there for a second. Your thoughts about Sebastian Vettel's retirement? Um, you know, I'm sad. I'm really sad about it because I think just my impression of it, and I don't follow F1 as closely as I used to. Um, my impression of it is that because, well, he's he, he's not being given the opportunity or the car that that he has that he needs to get another championship or win a few races, and it's very sad. Um, but then you can also say Alonso's been in that boat for how many years, and he's still driving, right? So it is sad because I think regardless of where he is on the grid. He's still an exceptional driver. And whatever you think of him personally, he's an amazing driver. And when you need amazing drivers, because this is the best of the best that are competing. And if you want to grow, you need to face the best. So that's why I miss, I, I'm saddened by him leaving. He's a four-time world champ and he's done a tremendous, he's had a tremendous career. But then on the flip side of that, he's making way for new blood. So it's mixed feelings about it. I am sad, but I am sort of happy at that okay, there are, there's making room for a new set of drivers because there's only 20 or 22 drivers in the world that can compete at this level. And um, if you have drivers sitting on those seats for 15 years or so, 
not that he's been there for 15 years, but um, he won his first championship. I think it was 2010. Um, so that's 12 years. That's not a long time. It's a long time to be at the pinnacle of motorsport or any sport. So he had a good run. I agree. On a personal note, a little saddened, but this is part of life. We need to we need to evolve and we need to allow new blood in. You like that? That was a gift. That was a gift. Um, and I love it too. It really adds a vibe to the whole retro vibe to the whole Tita Clock studio because I like collecting little vintage things you see over here. Um, that's like a a gasoline um, hand pump with a light on it. Um, the bar over here is like this. Oh, got our alcohol over there. <laughs> you got this this bar over here, which has got the leather and the wood. It looks like an airplane. Up there, you've got the airplane. <laughs> you got the Tito Clock uh, neon and all that kind of jazz. So, yeah, I love it. Thank you for noticing. Really appreciate it. Actually, the person who gave it is here. Um, still tuned in, I think, Roxy330. So if you're still out there, thanks for that. Um, first case of monkey fox. No, should, should we impose travel, right? No. Uh, this is my this is my opinion, okay, RS. I know it's going to be a controversial one because we've been, we've been led to be uh, afraid. We've been conditioned to be afraid of everything. And personally, on a personal note, I'm sick to death of it. I think they're using this again. I really, that's just my opinion, okay? It's a personal one. I just think it's just too much. I really think that they are blowing this way out of proportion because they want to control the population again. The WHO, I think, really dropped the ball with COVID. I really don't. I we, we fell into a trust crisis during COVID because so many institutions that we once held in such high regard and revered let us down. They let us down by with so many ways. Now, it doesn't matter how you feel about COVID. The fact that they, they push these vaccines that have a 75-year period that they're fighting for that they're not allowed to release data. And now we see the data being released. And it's very damning. It's very contradicting to what they were promising us. They told us that the vaccines would, you know, in the United States, Biden said in uh, July of 2021, he went on a CNN town hall. The whole world saw it when he said, if you get these vaccines, you will not get COVID. He had four. He got COVID. He does double masks. These are things that now have led to a trust crisis. So these are the after effects of it. When you now have, let's just say monkeypox is legit, which I personally don't believe, but once again, you know, it's just a personal opinion. The problem is the fact that I'm in automatically, my first reaction is to not believe, shows the kind of problem that they created. They created this because they lied to us, they exaggerated, and they refused to admit when they were wrong. Now, if you refuse to admit that you're wrong in something like this, that's it. You've blown your, your credibility. They say, follow the science, follow the science. I followed the science until I saw science follow the money. That's my problem with it. I still believe in science, but not necessarily the scientists, not all of them. Science, if it's done correctly, needs to be questioned. Okay, that by its very design, it is a discovery. It needs to be questioned. That's how they get to it. They get to it by putting it up there and being questioned until they have reduced the power of deduction, right? They, they finally reduce it to one final unchangeable this is it right because it's been scrutinized to death but what they did is they said you're not allowed to ask questions but so if science said it it's done no it didn't go through the process like normal science goes but okay um that's just uh i i'm ranting here already because i just am sick and tired of how people have been using this pandemic to control other people i've traveled so much this year once i january sorry january this year I've been to um, so many different countries already internationally. I've done Dubai twice. I've done Armenia. I've done Paris. I've done um, Monaco. I've done uh, Amsterdam. I've gone, I've gone around. And if you go around and you see how they handle it overseas, they don't care anymore. They really don't. It's like a cold. They treat it like a cold. But the media, and this is what bothers me, is the media lost the golden goose. They lost their cash cow. Because this was this had dominated the conversation for so long, and now all of a sudden, if they if they don't scare you, they're going to lose money. They're going to lose viewers. They're going to lose readers. And so you can see how the incentive structure is there to keep the panic alive, to keep the fear alive. News is based on negativity already, 
and it's sold, not told. And this is why I have a tremendous problem with it is I, I hate to be a skeptic, but if they do this, if this is the design of how news has been and it has to be seasoned before it's given to you because we don't accept just the basic truth anymore because it's too boring. Well, you're going to have situations like this where there's just going to milk everything for all it's worth. And that's where I feel that we've gone already with uh, with COVID. And now it's my personal opinion now that they're going to do it with monkeypox. Again, I'm not an official here, but then again, every time they use the word experts now, I switch off because the experts have been so wrong about these things that it really gets me hurt. Bakit parang hindi po kayo tumatanda? Well, you know, I'm going to skin away. <laughs> yeah, so Skinnerway has been, you know, working on this. On on this, first I was reluctant about it because I'm not. I've never done any skincare regime. Uh, I'm one of those old school titos. It's like, de kai tide okay lang, kai joy pwede niyan. You know, it, I don't care about these things. I don't care about the moisturizing, the sunscreens, and all this kind of jazz. But lately, I've been going to Skinnerway for the past year or so. And they've been just like insisting that, you know, they do something. And okay, fine. I went, I had submitted myself reluctantly, but then I started to see results. So I was like, maybe, maybe it's not such a bad thing after all. And, uh, but I'm not going to get rid of the white. That's all. <laughs> I, I, I like the white. Would I recommend the Vios GRS? Yeah, sure, Bob. Because I mean, the Vios best selling uh, compact car, I think, um, could possibly be of all. No, not the man of all time because I think Corolla still holds that. But the Vios is just an incredibly reliable, no-brainer purchase. So the GRS package just steps it up a bit. If that's your cup of tea, personally, on I think it's great. I like the little trims that they put on it. Um, sure, you cannot go wrong with the Toyota. You really can't. I think we have time for a couple more or one more. One or two more. Um, here, what about Martin? What vitamins do you take? What vitamins do you take? Um, not a lot. Vitamin C. Um, I try to get vitamin C as often as I can. And um, there's that fish oil. I take a Cardi Clear. Um, I have a nice supply of it now. And um, I don't know. We, I've just been taking it. I feel good. I don't know if it's directly correlated, but I take the fish oil. I take the um, vitamin C and those are pretty much the, the only two and then at night i've been taking the uh sleep acils um, because i find the melatonin just helps me get to sleep it doesn't put me to sleep it just helps me fall asleep and then you know if you're tired enough you, you stay asleep and I, I like it and it's natural at least that's what i'm told it's natural better be because i don't like any i don't use any kind of prescription drugs um None. I haven't. I don't. I'm not on any maintenance medication. I don't want to be as much as possible. I don't suffer from anything except hyperacidity every now and again. But I do know how to control the hyperacidity through my diet. But the most I'll take is omeprazole, uh, and then I do spend a lot of time in the sun as well. So I get my natural vitamin D from there. How many cups of coffee? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you. Mm, honestly, um, five, maybe six. Yeah, five to six. Sometimes more. It depends how early the day I start. I mean, it's it's like a well-known thing in the circles when, like, especially hosting, live hosting. They usually come with two um, big Starbucks Americanos just to get my engine running. <laughs> I'm, I just don't, I don't like to, I, I, I'm not very social before my first two cups of coffee. I usually drink the first one or two in silence and uh, just check the, uh, check on socials and stuff like that. Um, or just keep quiet. Sometimes I'll just wake up, I'll just have the coffee and I'll just sit in silence for like five minutes or so or 10 minutes. Um, so yeah. All right. Um, Carl, Patrick, Zegers, your sweeping statement on COVID and monkeypox is a bit irresponsible. It may be your personal opinion, but it's being broadcast to a wide audience. Please exercise caution and mental reservation. Um, how about no, um, Carl? 
This is the thing. You cannot keep censoring people. Even if you don't agree with it, stop censoring people. Just because you don't agree with it, it doesn't necessarily make you right. Okay, that's a personal opinion. That's why I label it as such. Just because I have a bigger audience, it doesn't matter. You're, you're patronizing people by saying they're too dumb to make up their own minds. If I said this was fact, that's disinformation, that's irresponsible. If I share a personal opinion about something and I label it as such, people are smart enough to be able to decipher it for themselves. Okay, so I did not tell you what to do and what not to do. I told you what my personal opinion was of it. And you know what? The rest of the world is pretty much of the same opinion. It's pretty much here that we are still in Stockholm Syndrome, which means we just cannot, we fell in love with our captors. Some people just cannot let go of the masks and the and all of this. Nowhere else, it's, it's everywhere else they laugh at you now if you wear masks, especially outdoors. They really, it, trust me, I've been around planes, trains, automobiles, boats. I've tra taken all the public transport in Europe. I was on how many different trains and planes? You don't wear them. They don't wear them. And exactly. Let him speak. Stop it with the censorship. It really is. Um, again, this is the problem. If you don't agree, shut him up. Not how it works. This is what I have a problem with, with the science. It's like, just because it's science, it needs to be questioned. But if you censor them, like what they did in the early part of COVID, not, not the early part, pretty much the whole of COVID, they didn't allow any dissenting opinions. And then later on, they found out I, they were right for law it was a lab leak or the, the vaccines really don't prevent spreading because they don't. It's not even an opinion. Four jabs later, people still are getting the COVID. So that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Okay, cash cow, Ramon Cruz. Yeah, that's that's how I feel too. It's going to go, it's going to die. We go back to normal. So these are, we saw this, I've seen this happen in my lifetime a few times. It's not just COVID. What bothers me about this is I've seen it happen with 9-11. Before 9-11, I don't know how old you are, right? But when 9-11 happened, it changed the face of travel forever, forever. The threat disappeared, but the security measures in the theater didn't. Why? Because they built an industry around it already. And then there was too much pride to go back. Let me give you another example, the war on drugs. They did this with cannabis. They did this with mushrooms. They did this with LSD. These were all legal drugs before perfectly legal and used for centuries. They're not even drugs. They're plants, harmless plants, right? Or plants. Okay, they have some kind of psycho psychoactive properties to them, but they're from nature. They grew from the ground with nothing added to them from a lab. And yes, they have some properties. Now, they were perfectly legal and used for centuries or millennia, not even centuries, millennia. And then one day, the government, specifically Richard Nixon in 1970-something, 71, I think, declared a war on drugs. And he said, these are harmful. It was one man's opinion with an agenda. And then they turned this into what it is today. Now they're walking it back and they're legalizing it in many other countries because they realize how wrong they were. People can be wrong, but sometimes it'll take a generation or two before they admit it because nobody wants to have egg on their face. And it's only now that those people that did it are all dead that they're starting to realize, I think we made a great mistake with it. But at least now they're not too proud to legalize it again because it has value. But do you see the mind conditioning? The mind conditioning that, oh, if it's marijuana, if it's shrooms, it's going to kill you. You're going to jump out of buildings. This is all propaganda. Nothing to support it. Go, I suggest you highly, I highly suggest you go and watch How to Change Your Mind on Netflix if you have it. That's a great documentary. And it will show you more than just about the drugs more than just about the marijuana and the shrooms, etc. It will show you how people manipulate, especially governments and people in power manipulate. And I also see it happening here. And now I see it potentially happening with monkeypox. So it's not my fault that I've lost trust in them. They did that a good job on their own. There you go. Okay, Carl. Wait, no, no. He. I just want, before we go, last thing, last thing. He said, uh, vaccines does not prevent you from getting COVID, it reduces the risk of severe hospitalization and death. That's the point you're missing, James. And don't call it a vaccine. That's the point you're missing. Don't redefine the word vaccine. Vaccine means you will not get it. Joe Biden said, you will not get it. Dr. Fauci said, you will not get it. This is not an opinion. This was stated as fact. You will not get it if you get the vaccine. You're missing the point. They said it, they were wrong. They refused to admit it. This is where the confusion comes in and the trust breaks down. If you wanted to say it's a suppressor, 
call it a suppressor. Don't call it a vaccine. Don't redefine the term. Because the term in the dictionary, which, by the way, they did. They did change the name. The, the, they did change it in the dictionary because they realized that was easier on their egos than it was to admit that they were wrong. All right. There you go. Um, I think we can finally do the raffle. Yeah. <laughs> the very the one thing that's probably not controversial today the raffle let's chill well i'm chill i'm totally chill here you know what i just think people should be allowed to speak that's all even if you don't agree with them even if they're wrong dun, dun, dun. um ba -bum, bum, bum. Well, how are we gonna do this i need a dog i need a dog oh first i need it's everybody's favorite time it is raffle time <laughs> Rocket gets paid in advance. You get paid in advance for pressing the button. Look at you. My goodness. All right, Rocket, you ready? You've been paid. Press that button. You love us, Hungry Raffle Dog. You know, if you ever want to sort of tease Rocket, you know, you just play that music and he thinks he's going to be fed. <laughs> and that's what you call conditioning. <laughs> All right, ready? This is an impromptu raffle. I got one. Oh. I got a piece of you know these are these are like anchovies he loves them no work for us press that button I have first <laughs> And before we go, we'd like to thank Motorlight the Front, all the kids, Gawa, Lalamid, Malayan Insurance, and of course, Skinnabay and Rocket Tip over here for uh, making the show possible. Huh? Ah, okay, okay. We didn't hear because of the claps. All right. Before we go, we'd like to thank Motorlight, Petron, Auto Kid, Ogawa, Lalamid, Malayan Insurance, and of course, Skinnabay, right? Thanks, Rocket. So that's it. If you won, by the way, if uh, who owes the name of the guy? They, uh, I, I missed the name. Got so excited. It was a boy. You think we flash it up again? No, is yeah. It? yeah, we'll try and flash it up uh, one more time. If you are this person, send us a screen grab. Please use the same account that you used uh, to join, and we will verify that because our software will pick it up. Uh, we can go straight to the actual link of which one you use. And as long as it matches, you get it. It's simple as that. We do not make it complicated at all. And it just send you by a Gcash 2000 bucks. All right, here we go. The money is here, but it'll come through electronically. Dun, dun, dun. No, it's not food rocket. It buys food. That's how the human world works. All right, got to leave you there. Thanks for hanging around, guys, girls. And uh, we'll see you next week. Till then, stay safe. Bye. Fancy meeting you in my internet. Couldn't help but notice your smile while everybody else around us is surfing about. Can we just stop and chat a while? Get away from these gray and boring lonesome days of our quarantine. Early yet to say what lies ahead, it's just the first day of the rest of our lives. Love could be waiting at the end of the 
first quarantine. Let's stop and talk.